Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop and today I'm going to show you how to make a Christmas tree skirt using two charm packs and a background fabric. Super easy, super beginner friendly, it's going to add a ton of charm to your Christmas tree this year and you're going to absolutely love it. Today we are using the Sweet Christmas Collection by Moda Fabrics and if you like our channel make sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified when we have new videos. So let's get started. Your tree skirt is going to be built based on some scallop units and you can see how pretty they are and um, we're going to start building them. Now if you want to purchase the pattern you can find it in the description box below. You're going to start with a fabric A square, which is just a basic simple charm pack square, a fabric F square. You're on the wrong side of the fabric. You're going to use a friction pen and draw a line from corner to corner. And I like to use a friction pen because the ink will disappear later with heat. You're going to place this on any corner and you're going to pin. I uh, like to use two pins and I'll pin this all, I'll just make stacks of these. You need to make 48 of these, so I would probably go ahead, pin them, and stack them, so when you go to your machine, you can just chain piece them. And when you're using a charm pack, you're gonna want to consider the outside peak part of your measurement. So when you're laying your white square on top, you're gonna lay it on the very edge of those outside peaks. So we're gonna go to the sewing machine, use the open toe foot, and stitch directly on that line. Now you have your corner square right on your unit. You're going to trim a quarter inch away from your stitched line and then you can discard this piece. And then on this step we're going to be pressing open. What I like to do is I use steam, set the seam, and that just means flatten your seam, press, and then we're going to press open. I like to press to one side, turn it over, burn myself, and press open. Just kidding, but not really. So I do like to, I feel like it works better if you press to one side and then press open. I feel like if you just try to press open, it kind of bunches on you. So um, it does take one extra step the way that I do it, but it works for me. So now we've got this um, beautiful seam pressed open. Now you're going to put two of these together, just like this, and you're just going to pin twice. I like to pin at the beginning and the end. And then you're just going to stitch with a quarter inch seam all the way down, and remember keep that uh, outer point on the edge of your quarter inch foot and this is going to be your scallop unit and you're gonna make 24 of these, super easy. So now we're gonna take our scallop units and we're gonna put two together. And when you put these together, you're going to see that you've got a lot of seams here. So what I like to do is pin at the very end first. I do a lot of pinning, but I rarely have to seam rip stuff out because I pinned, so in the end it does take more time, but then in the end it takes less time because I don't have to seam rip. And I'm going to just put these seams right together, making sure the white and the white touch, put a pin right there. And then I'll put another one at the top. We're going to make a total of 12 of these, and when you press it, it's going to press open. And so you have 12 of these. You're going to lay them this direction with the fabric D, and we're going to make four of these. Now what I will tell you is when you're making this, it seems natural to put it together like this, but you don't want to. So that's just my biggest tip to you when you're sewing this, is to really pay attention to the diagrams. All your scallops are moving outwards, and um, you're going to make four of these, and it looks like this. So now we're going to cut our fabric C and fabric E squares on the diagonal. And what I'm going to do is place, I place them on the diagonal on my table. And I will, you can put your fingernail right here so it stays in place. And then just move your, so if you put your fingernail here and your uh, ruler here and then you move it, this one stays in place. So it's in place. 
You're just gonna cut once. This is the bias right here. So this will be stretchy. So you wanna be careful with it and not stretch it like I just did. Um, and so I'm gonna put a fabric C on here so I remember what it is. We're gonna have four of those. And we're gonna do the same thing on our fabric E's and we're gonna have eight of those triangles. So now we're gonna take our double scallop and um, we're gonna put a fabric C triangle under it and it makes it look like a heart, it's so cute. So to do this, there will be trimming and we do that on purpose not to waste fabric but to give you more accurate results. So I'm gonna take this fabric C, I'm gonna find the very center and put a pin. I know this is the center because it's my center seam and I'm gonna put this right on top and I'm gonna pin. And I'm actually going to pin on this, the top of this, and the reason why is when you're stitching, whatever has the most seams goes on the bottom. Um, so you'll want to stitch with this white on top. That's just a general rule. So you're just going to pin it like this and stitch with a quarter inch seam. You don't have to worry about how much hangs off because we're gonna be trimming some of this off. And so once you stitch it, it's going to look just like this. Now we've got our unit and we've got some fabric E triangles on the side, but first what we need to do is trim off these little dog ears. And you can just do that with scissors or a rotary cutter. And then what you're gonna do is take a ruler and measure two and a half inches from the tip and make a little line with a friction pin. And this is where we come up with our fabulous math. Now you're gonna lay that tip where you wrote the two and a half mark right there Pin, I like to pin three times because you're on the bias here. So you don't want it to stretch when you're on the machine. And again, when you go to your machine, you're gonna put this white on the very top. Okay, here we're gonna do the same thing. Two and a half inch mark, pin, pin, and pin. Stitch a quarter inch seam and press towards the white and it is going to look like this. Now at this point, we're gonna be trimming some stuff off later down here, but for now, just trim right here is all we have to do here to finish this step. And we are gonna be making four of these also. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim a quarter inch away on these two sides where the big triangle is. But what I like to do is I like to mark it with a friction pin and then go back and trim after to make sure I've got it exactly right. So you've got a 45 degree angle on most Creative Grids rulers. I'm gonna align that with this seam. I'm a quarter inch away and I'm gonna draw a line. I'm not gonna cut. I've made too many mistakes in the past, so I learned from my mistakes. I'm gonna turn this, line up a line on my ruler with this top line, go a quarter inch away, make sure this lines up and this lines up and it does, and this is looking like it lines up, so now I will cut a quarter inch away. And again, you're gonna be doing this to all four of your units. So to put your Christmas tree skirt together, super easy. You've got four corner scallop units, and then around the center, you've got your scallop units. And in the center, we have a fabric B. It's very simple, you're just gonna stitch down your rows, press, towards your white and then press and then stitch the opposite way and press. 
super easy at this point you're not working on the bias everything should go together super nice and this finishes at about a 53 inch square obviously without your corners and so this would be a beautiful table topper or something for outside or you could leave it just like this but if you want to turn it into a tree skirt i'm going to show you how to how to cut the center and give you some tips on binding so now to cut our very center square i need to find the very center of my tree skirt. So if you put your ruler on the center of your scallop units, you can just draw a little line with friction pin. There's your center. And then you can do the same thing with these scallop lines. So now we've drawn a line so that it we have found our center. And we're using our perfect 10 ruler and you want it to be on the diagonal. So to do that, you can find the very center of your ruler right here, and you just put one of the lines on the line and then the other intersection, and you can see it looks center, it's on the diagonal, and we're gonna cut around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna cut too, too close. I'm gonna cut and then I'm gonna use some scissors so that I don't interrupt the rest of my quilt. So I'm just going to press, but I'm not going to go too far, and then I'm going to use my scissors to do the rest because that's how I do it. Now, I have been doing this a long time. Don't email me that I'm going to cut myself because if I do, I do. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So now we've got this, and I didn't want to cut too far, so I've got my scissors. And I like these Omni Grid scissors because they're super sharp. And I'm just gonna cut the edges just to make sure I didn't cut too far. It's just a safety precaution. You don't have to do it, but I get a little nervous with those rotary cutters sometimes. And then this is super cute. You can use this like in your kitchen as a hot pad. I mean, you don't have to throw this away. You could cut it into four pieces and make them coasters. And I have several like this at my house and I don't even put binding on them. So we've got that. Now what we needed to do is cut our line to separate the tree skirt so that it can go around our tree. Okay, so now I just turned my tree skirt a little bit and remember we've got it at a diamond. Pick any point you want, doesn't matter. And you just pick the point. And since we measured it, we know our point is gonna line up with the scallop. And so it lines up with this scallop and this scallop and you're just gonna cut. Ta-da! So now what you need to do is you're just gonna put your binding all the way around the outside and the inside. Now if you click here, you will get reference to another video that gives you tips on how to do the 120 degree angles um, to bind your quilt. We hope you love this tree skirt. Um, everyone at Fat Quarter Shop is gonna make one for their home. We can't wait to see yours on social media. And make sure to give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.